everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we give you the news, the reviews, and clues to what's going on in the superhero genre. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. We got a great show for you today. We got a lot of news to discuss. Not too many re- sh- discussions on any shows, because there's really not much happening, except for one show in particular that we'll get uh, 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 not too deep into a discussion, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, some news, and, and I was referring to Jupiter's Legacy, if you haven't caught it yet. Um, Garfield shoots down Spider-Man rumors. Joker 2 reportedly still in development, which was news to me. I didn't. Even, I thought there was only going to be one Joker. And we also have the Takahani, what, what's his name? Takahashi Coates. Takahashi Coates. J.J. Abrams doing a Superman that there seems to be some uh, negative feedback as to how they, what they want to do with this IP. Uh, Hugh Jackman wants to be in Deadpool 3 as a cameo, of course. And Zack Snyder talks about how difficult it will be to do a Star Wars film, for him at least. And then we'll get into Venom 2 trailer that just released today. Uh... Brian, how are you doing? Good. It does feel like we're in a little bit of a, a lull. So we're back to kind of the news flow and the rumor mill really dominating versus kind of comparing notes on shows, even though, as you said, Jupiter's Legacy is out there. Bad Batch also has premiered in the Star Wars universe. So a couple things, but, you know, it definitely is a quieter time before we Loki and Black Widow kind of ramp us back up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, before we get into all of that, we just like to remind everybody to hit, please, please, please hit that notification bell that subscription button share with your friends and that like button please hit that like button it definitely does help support the channel now garfield andrew garfield who's one of the better spider-mans i liked him as spider-man not necessarily the the movies although the first one that he did was pretty good the second one not so much so he is shooting down the rumors that he is involved with Spider-Man 3, uh, Far From Home, what's it called? No, no way, way no, no Way Home. And of course, he's going to say that, right? He's, I guess he's following the rules, unlike Alpha Merlina that said, oh yeah, I'm going to be in it. Tommy McGuire has nothing to say. But Andrew Garfield felt necessary that he had to say that he's not involved in it. Brian, you and I know that he is involved in it. Regardless of what he says, what do you think? Is he in this movie? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, this is, we've been down this road so many times where the contract's not signed or there's a little bit of thing about money or there's some kind of, we don't want you to say anything until a certain event or a certain you know promotional date that they have in mind. So I take put no value or weight in comments like this. He's yeah. probably has a specific reason that he has to. I agree with you. I think, you know, with his Spider-Man, it was a passion project for him. That was a character he wanted to play. My personal opinion is he had a little bad luck in the sense that he as an actor hit it big, a little too old to nail the high schooly side of Peter Parker. I feel like if we got to see him do it in 2008, 2009, like right around the time he was doing social network, yeah, yeah. I actually think it might even been a little bit better because he was he's older than what Tom Holland was when he started. And that does make a difference for Peter yeah, yeah. Parker. Like there has, you know, so I agree with you. Good Spider-Man and uh, excited to see him back in the role. And I absolutely believe he will be back in the role. So, yeah, I mean, I guess he has to when you're being put on the spot like that, I guess you have to say what you got to say in order to not um, ruin the surprise and not get sniped by a Marvel exec. Well, uh, but the other thing, too, is we've already had confirmations of previous Spider-Man villains. So yeah. are we going to, what, what is this? The Royal rumble? We're going to have like 29 <laughs> villains and Tom Holland. Like that's not going to work. He clearly needs help. Yeah. So, you know? this, I, if you, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard my comments before regarding a story that they're going to be telling in no way home. And I'm hoping that it's not, too much to digest. 
I hope it's not a fanfare, but I hope it's more going along with the storyline of this is Peter Parker, uh, oh, Spider-Man is Peter Parker and how he gets away from all that drama and and hint at future installments of that storyline. I wouldn't want to get it on this. I, I guess it's all, if they do do give it to us and it's great, then they, they did a hell of a job writing, but I just find it difficult to sort of get all of that in one film well the, the one thing i will say about the denial is they're already shooting this it would at least raise the odds that what you're hoping for is true which is his part in this is not that big because if they're already shooting it and he's still issuing the denial just from a number of days on set it's kind of limiting how much he can be there. So that would probably lead you to his part is not gigantic. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think, you know, Jamie Foxx, Alfred Molina sounds like they're in it a little bit. So that, that I think could make some sense mm -hmm. and would probably feed into our thesis of don't fire every bullet in this movie at this, at this multiverse idea. So. Yeah. Cause you got to take into account this. Being that there's so many, possibly so many villains involved, they still haven't developed the Sinister Six storyline and how they'll deal with Spider-Man. If you're dealing with a lot of characters, it's just too much going on if you're going to do it in only this one film. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that these uh, appearances from Doc Ock, Electro, lead to, again, the next installments of Spider-Man and the multiverse and and we get that storyline played out in a different movie and we already know doc strange and charlie and daredevil are in this too so the, you know in the absence of avengers films we're clearly seeing marvel is willing to put these you know like the thor hulk and ragnarok the mini team-ups and yeah. so there at some point there's only so much room before this becomes full-blown avengers or sinister sticks before you probably want it to so yeah, that's going to yeah. limit what you're willing to do i think yeah. in this. Again, we confirmed it. Charlie Cox, will, Charlie Cox will be Daredevil in this movie. We confirmed it. There's not a lot of people confirming it out there. We are. Next, let us know what you think. What this movie, this next installment of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home will be. Is it going to be the Spider-Verse? Are you looking forward to the Spider-Verse in this film? Or are you looking for a little bit of a more drawn out storyline uh, for this, this story? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Joker 2, reportedly in development or still in development. I thought, this is the problem that I have. You can do a Batman film and keep going. How much further can you keep doing a Joker film without Batman in it? You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit like, granted, and and I and I, and I have to say that, I, and I apologize to everyone because I, you know, I, I'm supposed to be watching this. I still haven't seen the joke. You haven't? I still have not seen it. No. <laughs> I still have not seen it. Um, but I know Bruce Wayne is in it, or, yep. or, or, or a young version of Bruce Wayne. So the Batman aura is still involved in this film but in his next if they do go ahead with the joker 2 i i'm just uncertain as to what sort of storyline because we're gonna get because we already got the origin what further developments can or progress can this joker make and how different can it be from the original so i have seen joker I have rewatched bits of it. The tough rewatch. I respect the art form of this movie. He didn't enjoy it that much. And I think, and, and, and that's. Did you enjoy the performance? Yeah. So it's one of those where you watch Joaquin and Joaquin Phoenix in the role. And it's, you can almost feel feel him like gunning for the Oscar, like as he's on screen, like every minute he's on screen, he just gobbles it up. And it made me feel like 
Batman is more valuable to the Joker than the other way around. Meaning the Batman rogues gallery is strong enough that you can build a great Batman film without Joker. The Joker's head. But Joker, when the, the Joker movie is so Joker centric, it's almost too much. There's almost not, there's just no one else on the screen who could compete with him for two, two and a half hours. And so you kind of need that straight man, which is kind of what Bruce is, right? He's sort of the, you know, even though he's got his own issues, he's kind of mm -hmm. the straight man to Joker's twisted, chaotic ways. And like, the movie does feel like it misses that a little bit. Like as good as Joaquin is, like he is carrying the franchise. It's like, he, he needs the second banana. He needs the side, like this, even if it's Batman as sidekick, he needs something like that. And you don't really have that in the film. They do introduce a young Bruce Wayne, but I can't see them. And I can't see the studio being cool with a Joker too, that grows up that Bruce Wayne into a competing Batman to the Arpats Batman. Yeah. I, that would shock me if that's the way they go. So you're left with a Joker for which, you know, it ends with a cliffhanger of him effectively being free and to kind of do his thing. And there's other characters he can wreak havoc on. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of this almost anti-hero in that film. He, he develops quite a following, like a popularity. Mm -hmm. But this is not a film that I think Joaquin Phoenix or Todd Phillips set out to make into a franchise. They're being mm -hmm. pushed into it because it made over a billion dollars mm -hmm. and became a, an Academy Awards leading contender, not just for the win, but it was nominated, I think, 11 times. So this is one of those, like, we're reverse engineering the franchise based around how it did. You know, so yeah, of course it's in development. It made a billion and billion one. Like it's <laughs> going to be in development. Might be in development for ten years. I mean, you are dealing with an actor who's not known for doing sequels mm -hmm. and franchise and IP. Like he did it one time because he liked the story. I'm not convinced he wants to come back and yeah. sign over three years of his life to do Joker two and Joker three. Yeah. So TBD on that. Um, yeah. But. The studio is going to shell out because it's with Aquaman. It's one one A is the biggest cash cows they have right now. Mm -hmm. They need it. Yeah. I don't know. Let, uh, let us know in the comment section what you think about this. Uh, do you think Joaquin Phoenix was signed up to do another Joker, knowing or semi knowingly what you know about Joaquin Phoenix and what he does and how he likes to do things? Do you think he'll sign up for another Joker too? And do you think also as well, will uh, Batman be involved? Because I don't know if I can do, even though I haven't done a, two hours of Joker, I don't know if I can do another two hours of just Joker. So let's see. Let us know in the conversation below. I think the other question is, mm -hmm. this is, you know, we've talked about DC and Warner Brothers. It, this movie has had the feel of, they really gave the keys to Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Out of the way. Of course. And that's what I mean by I'm curious as to whether they'd be willing to do it again just because, you know, if Todd Phillips says, hey, I want Bruce Wayne to be the, the opposite and they know they're trying to promote the bat. I, I just wonder how that's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you, the, it, it almost seems like they almost, it would be more believable if they hadn't introduced a young Bruce Wayne in there. And just leave him out completely to sort well, of you know what i wish they hadn't introduced is they if they didn't have margot robbie as harley quinn that would have been the other balance you could have tried to provide but now that she's not yeah. only still around but actually in suicide new suicide squad yeah. i think that lane is also closed off too this is what happens when you and not to say that top phillips you know, you don't give him the rights to do whatever he wants, but this is what happens when you're trying to build something of a universe and you can't because of all these, um, I guess, keys to do whatever you want situations. So it's like, if you wanted to do it, you, it's really, it'll be really, really tough to, to sort of sell that piece of it. JJ Abrams, ta Coates are writing and producing a new Superman film. 
This is going to be good. Um, when it was first announced, the talks was what kind of Superman this would be. And then later on, we get, we, we hear the rumors that they are looking for a person of color to play Superman. And we've had this discussion before, Brian, that in, in your, you, you said that, you know, he's an alien. He could be anything, right? Um, he can be black and be, be whatever. He's an alien. Cool. I get that. And my <clears throat> argument would be, I just feel like I'm going to throw the P word pandering. And the second thing is that they're doing it just to be different. And I'm just, and I just feel like, I think they're doing it for the wrong reasons. If they were doing a Calvin Ellis or, or, or the other character, Zod. Valzad. Valzad. Yeah. If they were doing that, I'll be cool with it. But he's supposed to be Kal-El. Yeah. Well, that's the new piece of news, right? They confirmed that it is Kal-El and he is it's the Krypton. It's the origin story of some form, but it's modified. Is the fact that he okay? The, so the fact that he's an alien is already like a strike. Like, oh, he's an alien. We don't want. And do we add the second fact that he's black and and the people are gonna in the movie they're gonna have this? You're gonna have this sort of racism sort of thing in in the film as well. It's just to me. To me, it's just. I don't know. I I, I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know how fans will react. We've already seen some reaction. There's a lot of people that don't like this. Um, what do you think, Brian? I want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, look, I mean, I've defended the concept of it um, in the sense that it just doesn't, as I said, I, I feel like the, the ethnicity of the character in the comics is a function of when he was created. It's not a function of a need for him to be Caucasian, which is different, as we've said, from, you know, T'Challa, Magneto, you know, um, uh, Shang-Chi. Like, there, there's characters whose ethnicity informs everything about their story. So you, yeah. you just can't change that without changing the DNA of everything you're doing. Whereas, you know, I said some of these characters, yeah, like, why, why, couldn't, why couldn't an alien species, you know, have... Um, ethnicities or co you know colors that mirror sort of different colors in our society. Now, so I defend the concept of it. I am suspicious of it in the way that you are, uh, because I it does when you add in a lot of the other things that are happening in the DC universe. There, there definitely is a. You know, let's say the good and the bad. There's a concerted effort to diversify the lineup. I applaud that. You should studios ought to be doing that. It looks a little bit like when you put it alongside the Ray Fisher saga with WB. There's a there's a whiff of reaction function to that, right? You kind of mm -hmm. you look at that and you're like, mm, same studio taking some bad PR because of that. And all of a sudden now we've got some other things, you know, I guess you could argue it doesn't matter. Like if we get, you know, good, good actors and actresses of color into, into premium roles, then maybe we shouldn't care exactly like how that was accomplished. But where I am skeptical um, is on the execution. Right. So, so I thought about this after our initial conversation. And the one thing I hadn't considered, but I think is worth discussing here is part of the reason I think people are averse to this is because they don't trust where this is coming from. So I think if, if Marvel did something like this on a grander scale, so they've, they're doing it on a small scale, but uh, like we talked about, like Jonathan Majors as Kang, technically that's a recast of the ethnicity. But I think if the MCU gave you that, you would be more inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt that they have a specific vision and idea for why they're making the change. And you would let it play 
to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I think the issue here is there's been no evidence from Warner Brothers that they can execute a, a good Superman film of any kind. And I think the risk you do run is if you, you're raising the degree of difficulty, I think, a little bit. By, to your point, if you're going to make Superman black, you kind of can't ignore racism as a theme in the movie. Like, you can't. Like, yeah. If you do, you're going to be savaged by fans and critics for being like, wait a minute, we're supposed to just pretend like this is the same? No. <laughs> so you have to dive in. Yeah. But in diving in, as we saw with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's a balance. It's a balance with every piece of the script. You And, I, and look, look Ta-Nehisi Coates is, is an accomplished writer. I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm just saying Kal-El from the comics versus Kal-El as he's going to be written here, you probably making it a little bit harder on yourself to nail, stick the landing on this. And yeah. you've already flubbed Superman Returns. You kind of flubbed the Snyder verse Henry Cavill version. So I do think there's an argument for like, why should we give you the benefit of the doubt that Clark Kent and Superman in this form is going to be that much better? I think that's really, like, if you're asking the question, I think that's where I would go as opposed to like, could Superman ever be black or could Kal-El ever be black? Yeah, I think he could. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but it, it's the hands you're in. Do you really trust the J.J. Abrams? And more importantly, do you trust the studio looming behind him to let this be executed well? And oh, the, the other thing we didn't talk about, period piece, that also makes it harder. So you're, I'm assuming that Code, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna take a wild guess. 1960s. I'm take. I'm that be the logical, <laughs> right? I mean, that'd be the logical period of history, unless that would lend itself to a journalist and a superhero from another planet who's a person of color. That's hard. That's hard to do well in anybody's hands. So that's where I think a lot of the pushback is probably coming from, and I can sympathize with that. To me, I mean, if you you're doing a period piece, I mean, I mean. <laughs> It's like you're almost doing Blue Marvel. Almost. It just, I don't like where it's, I, I just don't like, because like you said, it's like you haven't been able to do a good, a good Superman. There are a ton of ideas that you can do, but you seem not to be able to get it right. And so you want to do this to spice it up? It's just, to me, it doesn't make sense We'll see what happens with this. I think there's going to be a lot of backlash as we as it's getting so far, and the more and more, I mean, well, there's a lot of risk here, right? Because we said man is so the studio has basically told you six hundred and fifty million dollars a global box is a bust because that's what Man of Steel made, and they. Mm -hmm viewed that as a disappointment so they panicked and batman showed up and away we went so what if this does 650 million global is that a franchise killer like you see that's that's where I, I struggle with this it's like if you do this and it fails like it, it busts for some reason yeah. now you're kind of stuck right like you know what i mean like you're really kind of stuck with the super like you you kind of killed two different avenues of Superman. And I don't know like where that leaves you other than you got to wait five, 10 years and then just kind of let it blow over and start over again, which is kind of sad for us fans. But I think that's the downside. Is it like, if you do this and it's not a billion dollar movie out of the gate, which is kind of where you're setting yourself up for, I don't know, you can come back and do it again. And now it's like, I hate to say it, but does that invite you? Like, all right, we, you know, person of color in the superman role doesn't work can't ever do that again that'd be a shame yeah. like, if that's the outcome of this but yeah. you know i don't know brian this is this is not gonna i i just don't see the odds are against it as, as far as i can is what i can tell the odds are against this movie being successful uh the odds are against there's a lot of people supporting it um the we'll other see. piece of this is, look, they want, they're looking to hire a black director. The A.J. Abrams has said he's not directing. it. Everything we're discussing here, any director of any color is going to be well aware of. 
Like Ryan Coolers, I don't think he's stepping into this chair. Like just as one obvious example, who would get a call? So you also have to consider like, is the elite talent out there? Do they want to take this on with everything we're talking about here? There's going to be a huge spotlight. Yeah, a man. A lot of ways to fail. If this movie bombs. A lot of careers are on the line. Correct. Yeah, and, and oh, we're looking for a, 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 a black director. And it's like, yo, if you were doing an Ewok movie, would you hire Peter Dinklage to do the, the, the film? It's like we gotta get a, a, a no, but this I, I I just don't see good things for this movie. I don't know, but that's my point. It's like you know, if you're Ryan Coogler or Jordan Peele or like, you know, I don't see them wanting wanting to, to, no. to step into this. Even uh, this guy uh, Michael B. Jordan was sort of like you know I'm flattered, but nah. Yeah, he's working, I mean, and to his credit, like he's working on producing Static Shock, Shock which I yeah. think is a very, you know, interesting and, you know, logic. That's a project that I think has a lot of intrigue, but yeah, even yeah. he's not directing, he's not starring, like he's yeah. producing that. Yeah. I, I think this will be interesting to see who is willing to step up and take a swing at this. Somebody will. There's always yeah. somebody. And it won't be somebody out of nowhere, I don't think. Oh, I think the Kal El will probably be somebody more unknown, but. I think the director won't be out of nowhere, but are they going to get, look, I mean, let's be honest in Hollywood, there's not enough. There should be more. There's not enough premier directors of color as it is, but are one of them going to be willing to take this assignment and take on every, all the baggage that's going to come with it? I don't know. Uh, that is a question for you guys. Let us know in the comment section below what you think about this situation. I, I, I don't see it turn out well for this iteration of of superman who knows you, you might you might get a you might get a 180 you never know because we still haven't they're still they still haven't done anything yet they haven't hired anybody yet they're, this this is something could be a feeler to we'll see what people think i don't know but here's the other piece of this that we probably should just talk about more at some point which is you know, we just got done with, you know, WB just, well, we'll see if they got done with it officially or not, but, you know, they just went down the path of effectively a decade of having one person at the controls of the DC universe and not being happy, the studio being at odds with that person and Zack Snyder over and over again. I'm not saying whether, don't take it, forget taking a side. I know we have a side and so forth, but it wasn't collaborative for eight years. And they weren't happy with the output. So why are we doing this all over again with JJ? Yeah. It's not any different, yeah. right? Like JJ Abrams, it's the same thing. It's, a, it's, an, it's an empire building person who has had his share of hits and his share of misses. Like we just talked about, I mean, Rising Sky, I mean, there's no Star Wars fan that's going to be like, I want JJ Abrams back to do anything Star Wars at this point. Nobody. <laughs> But those same people five years earlier would have been thanking him for Force Awakens, right? So the point is, nobody's perfect, he's inconsistent, but you're handing him the keys and you're saying, go. And he's starting with stuff like this and you're like, mm, that's where having the parliament around could kind of be useful, right? Like, and so you're kind of making, you know, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. It does kind of look like WB is forgetting the past and being a, maybe handing over too much control to one individual and not enough voices. In the, I don't know. I'm and, just and, I'm throwing and, it out there. And that's their problem, man. That is their problem. Letting people do it worked with Todd Phillips. Right. You'll get some big hits, but you're yeah. going to get some big misses too. Exactly. And that miss can destroy the possibilities. It, it, it sets you back years. Whereas if you mess up once, you can continue and, 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 and correct, course correct. With this, course correction takes years. Yeah. I don't know, man. Let us know in the comment section what you guys think about this. And this studio should know that better than anyone because look at how long it took them to get Superman Returns made. How many hilarious <laughs> versions of Superman can you find on the internet between 
Christopher Reeves low life, low level exit in quest yeah. for peace. Yeah. You know, 20 years. It took 20 years. We had the Abrams flyby, which is absurd and never yeah. got made. Nicholas K. I mean, like, all the Tim Burton Superman, which is just wacky when you look at yeah. the screen test yeah. of that. Yeah. But that's the thing. It took them 20 years to reboot that franchise and they're forcing it like right after the Cavill stuff with Cavill still hanging in the back. Yeah. It just, yeah, I don't know. Patience, man. You don't, you don't need it right now. Patience. That would be my yeah, thing. Yeah. Know? Yeah. There's just, there's just so much better things out there to do with this character. And you just guys are just trying to do something different with it to get people talking about it. And then, and potentially ruin ruin the potential of what it can be. Anyway, Hugh Jackman wants to do a cameo in Deadpool 3. Listen, it is inevitable for Hugh Jackman to make a cameo in anything that Marvel decides to do with an X-Men film. He wants to, I guess he wants to do a cameo because, you know, he has a good relationship with Ryan Reynolds and stuff like that. And it's Hugh Jackman, right? He's, everybody loves Hugh Jackman. Why not? Why wouldn't Marvel want to do it? Oh, so of course, I would have much preferred him to be do a cameo in a, a Marvel film, an X-Men film, if they ever got to do. But by the time, the thing is, by the time that they get to do that, because I don't think we're getting an X-Men film anytime soon. No. We're going to get sprinkles of mutants all over the place and it will eventually evolve into an X-Men film, but that's not happening anytime soon. This is the closest that I guess we'll get to a Wolverine appearance. Uh, I don't know if even, I don't know if even the cameo he'll be Wolverine, who knows, but most likely he will. Um, what are your thoughts on, on Hugh Jackman wanting to make a cameo in Deadpool 3? Well, let, let's call a spade a spade. Th this is something that Ryan Reynolds has lobbied for hilariously on social media and in public and interviews for years, right? Yeah. He has begged this as part of the Deadpool promotion dating back to, I think, the original film. So, and they're supposedly, their friends supposedly off screen. So, I'm not, I mean, it's not a surprise that, you know, he finally is like, okay, let, let's, yeah. let's do this. This franchise also breaks the fourth wall all the time so you can do this without really disrupting any other mm -hmm. storyline you can totally mess around with this i actually it made me think of one thing and i'll just throw this out there see if i'm insane <laughs> you know stan lee occupied this unique position in the, in the mcu and they would constantly hat tip him with the cameos and you know he did such a great job with that there's no one that's ever going to be able to be stan lee and who holds that kind of status yeah what if you did Hugh Jackman Wolverine as that in a lot of Marvel pictures, just as a wink and a gag because of the idea that the character effectively is immortal. True. He's been playing it for so long. He has such a good sense of humor about it. And you just have him with the Wolverine hair. He doesn't even have to be Wolverine, but he always yeah. keeps the hair. And he just <laughs> pops up as the Stan Lee type cameo in every Marvel movie as just sort of like a he'll never be the character again for real uh, yeah, yeah but he does but he starts with this and he just starts popping up all, i actually wouldn't mind of all the guys that have come that, to that's, universe, that, i wouldn't mind that sounds like a good idea because you know wolverine is a character that is in pretty much every timeline and doesn't right. necessarily have to do anything yeah that that would work as long as it's done tastefully and comically and and it doesn't disrupt sort of uh, the whatever storyline that they're going with, as long as it's you know that they make it sort of that Stanley sort of feel yeah, that every that time exactly he came right. over, it didn't disrupt it. Yeah, it, that's that's a great idea. If if Hugh Jackman was down to do it, I'm pretty sure he would too. That's that's not a bad idea. Uh, let us know in the comments section what you think about that. Uh, Hugh Jackman cameo cameoing in every uh, or at least a, in every mutant type film that he's sure. that he's there in a, in a bar or whatever in the princess bar who knows yeah i'm uh, pretty sure we'll get that um zach snyder says he will have a tough time doing a star wars film i don't want zach snyder 
anywhere near <laughs> a Star Wars film. Because he says it himself. He's going to do whatever he wants. And Star Wars, Marvel films, those type of movies require a council where they sit down and discuss the best uh, course of action uh, to bring to, to, to the movie theaters and to the fans. Zack Snyder does his film. The films that he does, he does it his way. And he can't be involved in it, in my opinion. He says he would love to do one. But I, who would let him? Nobody's going to let him do it. What are your thoughts on Zack Snyder? I mean, he's right in saying that he can't. He would have a tough time doing it. Well, I give him credit for owning who he is. Yeah. You know, I think it goes back to a discussion we were having about could you ever have Zack Snyder in the MCU? Would he let himself be edited by Kevin Feige? I think he pretty clearly says in the article, no. That's just not who he chooses to be. It's not how he wants to operate. I respect that. I have no problem with that. He's not the only director alive who yeah. who insists on front-to-back control of a production. Uh, but to your point, that type of style is difficult to marry with huge franchise IP. And, you know, I, I still think like what we got in Zack Snyder Justice League, given when you when you layer on what he's saying about his, his identity, his DNA, how he operates as a director. I mean, I still think like what we got in Zack Snyder Justice League was pretty good, like considering that. I mean, considering you're taking franchise IP and you basically turned him loose. And like, I think the output, at least for those three, you know, four hours was was better than probably I expected it to be. Um, but, you know, as you say, the consistency, the editing, you kind of need it. And, and you kind of, and I think Star Wars now, I do think Disney seems to have learned their lesson from, you know, they had that, they gave George, so, right, like way back when, George Lucas, if you read it, watch any of the making ofs, yeah. the studio was all over him. Right, because they didn't believe it. They're like, "What is this? Like, what are you doing?" And then it becomes this global phenomenon. And the prequels, they give him too much. They give him yeah. too much freedom. They give him the freedom that Zack Snyder's talking about. Yeah. He directs all three. I think it's interesting. You uh, and McGregor's comments about coming back to Obi Wan, where he basically takes some pretty large shots at being yeah. directed by George Lucas in the prequels. But I think it speaks to the monopoly of control that George had. There was nobody there editing him. Yeah. And we got product that was up and down. Revenge of the Sith, probably underrated, but Pack of the Clones, ye, not good. Yeah, 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 so yeah. fast forward, now we've got sort of, it seems like Dave Filoni, John Favreau, Kathy Kennedy. Now there's like a little bit of a subcommittee that's gating and monitoring all of the Star Wars product. And it's feeling a little more cohesive and feels like we're kind of putting it back together bit by bit yeah. after Rise of Skywalker was a mess. Yeah. So yeah, I, that doesn't seem like the forum to then put in a cowboy director and say you're you're gonna get you know full control start to finish. That's not what we're looking at. And I and I think like you know Patty Jenkins with Rogue Squadron, even though she's a strong personality, if you watch the sizzle reel for that, or I don't know what to call it, like the little teaser for that, you kind of understand why that can work. So I didn't realize Patty Jenkins' dad was a fighter pilot. So that's why she's. That's why she's doing that. She loves yeah, Star yeah. Wars and her dad's a fighter pilot. But she's still going to operate, I think, within the lines of what the universe is. Mm -hmm. And if Zach's saying he's not willing to do that, then, you know, more power to him. I mean, I think yeah. that's all leads to all leads to Netflix, right? All roads lead to Netflix where yeah. he can, he can work yeah, on he projects to his heart's content. And hopefully we get armies of the dead and things that, you know, are 300s and we get some things that are good from his mm -hmm. from his yeah. skill set, but it yeah. just won't be Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, I like Zack Snyder and some of the things that he's done. I I, I loved um, uh, what's that movie? The Watchmen. Yeah. <sighs> to me, he he almost did that straight straight out of comics, right? He he changed probably a few things here and there, but. Yeah. 
I guess he already liked the grittiness of it already that he didn't really have to change much. Yeah, I think it fit with his view of superheroes and his DNA as a director. Yeah. That was a very good marriage between material and his vision. Hey, Zach, do 100 Bullets. Do 100 Bullets, a series on Netflix, 100 Bullets. That would work. Venom 2, the trailer. Listen, I wasn't excited about the first trailer for the original Venom, and I somewhat enjoyed the film. I didn't love it, but to me, when I watched the movie, that was Venom. And so I enjoyed some of it. Uh, what's this guy's name? Tom, Tom Hardy was, you know, he's a great actor and I enjoyed his performance. Venom 2 had the same sort of feeling towards it. Not necessarily overexcited to see this film, but when I see it, who knows? What it what it what it'll be? Hopefully, you know, maybe Spider Man makes an appearance. Who knows? But what are your thoughts on uh, the trailer? Yeah, I'm about the same. I mean, I I didn't I watched Venom. I didn't love it. You know, I found Tom Hardy's performance captivating, but almost difficult to watch. He's like so hyper. Like Eddie yeah. Brock is kind of he's not. He's obviously not a good guy which is the point he's kind of an anti-hero but he has good streaks in him and it's difficult to watch you know quite yeah. honestly but effective they caught Riz Ahmed before he really blew up you know so as Riot that was actually wound up being a pretty good choice for for villain my biggest concern when I watch this trailer is it looks like more of the same so where he basically went up against another symbiote in the first one and Carnage is another symbiote in this one yeah. and looks pretty comics faithful the one shot we got that looks a lot like carnage does in the comics and but my other concern is woody harrelson sounds like woody harrelson and i don't know like is he able to deviate from the persona we know him at? like it, does he still have the natural born killers woody harrelson in him to kind of be he sounded like the guy from Solo. He sounded yeah. like he always sounds like. Yeah, that yeah. was my other concern. So it felt like he's fighting the same kind of opponent, and he's up against a Woody Harrelson that seems very much like Woody Harrelson. Is this too much of a retread? That's was my biggest concern watching this. Yeah, I think I was. I I I, t I turned my excitement off when I saw the cutscene in Venom, the first Venom. There will be carnage, or that you know when he when he says what what would he say? He said there's gonna be carnage, whatever. When he said carnage, I was like, this is not gonna be good. But we'll see. I'm not necessarily excited for it. Let's see what how this turns out. Um, but I hope that Tom Hardy stays in the role long enough to be in the Spider Verse. Yeah, I mean, that's the like that's part of the hook of this whole franchise. Is yeah. you've got this A list acting talent, and you're right. The Venom, the Venom voice and the personality, it's well written. Like it, it, it is the comics version of Venom, like the way they intersplice the voices. So even though it's jarring, it actually is comics accurate. But, th you know, this did about 800 million a box office against bad reviews. I looked at this trailer and I was like, mm, I don't know that they're necessarily guaranteed to exceed that. Yeah. Unless, you know what I mean? And so then I'm just like holding out hope that Hardy will stick around contractually long enough to to be opposite Spider-Man, because that's yeah. kind of what we want to see. Yeah, that's what we really want to see. Let us know in the conversation below what you think about this trailer. Are you excited for Venom 2? Well, the last thing we'll get into a, a bit of the discussion is uh, Jupiter's Legacy. I finished it. And I have to say, this show is slow as AF extremely slow some things worked i just think the way they put it together didn't seem like when you've only seen three episodes correct right i put it down after four right i saw i saw like four episodes in one day and then i picked up at, at uh, um, episode five and i was a little bit more um 
curious about it. And I was saying to myself, had this episode started, had this been episode one, this probably would have worked a little bit better. Hmm. They made this show too dramatic. The, the 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 action when they came it was hardly no action and then when the action comes is like you is like you don't believe utopian is the, the 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 guy like like he's like you know superman is almost unbeatable yeah utopian didn't look like unbeatable and you'll see that in in in, in other episodes where he's like yo this when is this guy supposed to be like the man the man you don't see that. Um, I like where they were going. It was just too dramatic. Not a lot of fun. Definitely not fun. And I think there's a lot of the complaints that people had that this show was just too serious. It took to itself too serious. Not enough action. Too slow. And it had potential, Brian. It had a lot of potential. The costumes looked dope. Um, some of the CG where that fight with, with, with Black Star mm. seemed kind of not good. Yeah. Um, I just think it had a lot of potential and, and they, they, they took themselves too seriously with this. Uh, and, and it was just in the story, the story that they put together wasn't put together in the right sequence, I would say. So I, I said I'm not all the way through, but it's funny you you you're hitting on a lot of the themes that I'm reacting to initially, which is this reminded me of kind of the the darker parts of Smallville far than what we've gotten from the MCU or even Titans for for a comparison. And what I mean by that is like, Smallville in particular was stuck in my head. They did a Justice Society two part episode. And it was like this. It was like very self-important. Like every line was like, you know, real gravity, like really <laughs> serious about your responsibilities and all, and like you know the infighting of the family. You know this and that. No, and that show was about the infighting of the society being put together. And then you got to the actual fight, and the effects were a little bit soft. Like it just wasn't like the Black Star fight. I thought had potential. But it kind of then just dissolved into him kind of beating on him. And like, and, and you didn't really get to see like a real powers display. You know, it's like Utopian, Lady Liberty. It's like, how many times are you going to fly straight at him and bear hug him? <laughs> like, you know, he did, he used his, his version of, I don't know what he has. He doesn't he have vision. What does he have? Beams or whatever? Yeah, yeah. So he used that once. But it it didn't have that like wow moment yeah. that you would think with the money I'm sure Netflix put behind this it should have and i think the tough thing is you know we're, we've already had a couple of series courtesy of the mcu and by virtue of the boys you know it's funny i, I was thinking of homelander while i was watching this you know because homelander is obviously evil but he's a boss man every fight that that dude is in like it's over like and that's <laughs> and that's superman right that's superman gone bad but like yeah. that idea of yeah. and you're right like the, the first image we have of the utopian in battle he's kind of getting beat up pretty good right away and so mm. yeah i was with you like I, I i'll stick with it but i've been i'm kind of average on it. i'm sort of like meh i don't know that i need a season two of this if that's where this ultimately is headed it is definitely heading that way because it definitely doesn't resolve itself in no <laughs> way um yeah man netflix I has a quick hook man i'm just oh yeah oh yeah so they, I'll that be doesn't guarantee they'll get it i'll be surprised if they do a season two and they do a season two i'll watch it to see how much better it'll be but this season man i understand where they were trying to go because they weren't trying to be marvel they weren't trying to be dc they're trying to be their own thing this dramatic superhero type dallas dynasty type of thing Right? Those soap operas from back in the yeah. day. And it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And these are the sort of things, I'm not saying that, it is, that this is that bad, but things like this, 
Things like Thunder Force, I haven't seen it, but I heard it was horrendous. Those are the things that causes superhero fatigue. So let's see what Thunder where, Force. Uh, you force. can't put that. You can't put that in the same category. I actually <laughs> thought it was entertaining, but you can't put that in the same category. That's just they're just co-opting superhero. I'm just and, saying, man. Nah, that, that that's. <laughs> I'm fine with movies like that because <laughs> Melissa McCarthy being Melissa McCarthy, it's fine. There's actually some pretty funny moments in that. I thought it got a, a, a look for what it is, right? Like, you look, you're not going in that for critically acclaimed fare. You're not going in that for visually I, stunning yeah. fights, all right? Like, no, it's got some it's... pretty good physical comedy. I thought it was fine. That one doesn't bother me. <laughs> but these are the things, in my opinion, that cause that superhero fatigue when you get in all these uh attempts at something new to cap to get an audience yeah there's cool. no question the bar has been raised yeah. like if we go back you know i'll throw it out there like you know 2008 hancock was a huge hit and remember at the time 2008 that's iron man one days mm-hmm. i think if hancock comes out today it's a bust oh yeah because back then it was like oh this is kind of a little bit different. I haven't seen superhero done this way, but like now it would look bad. And like the Will Smith, Charlize it wouldn't be believed. Like people would look at it very differently, critically yeah. and commercially, yeah. but it was a huge hit like 13 yeah. years ago. So yeah, it's just the bars come up a lot. Like if you're going to be different, you know, we talk about the boys umbrella Academy, you got to find the lane to cook people. Yeah. And everyone's going for a superhero gimmick. Like, you know, I thought the, um, I thought that that Jamie Foxx movie Power. I thought that was actually not yeah, that, bad. Not that bad. You know, but that's the same that idea. They're going for a little different channel, and yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. You can't just put a cape on somebody and make money. Yeah, you know, I found it funny when I, you'll see, but I won't. I won't even ruin it. I won't even ruin it because I want you to see it first. We'll get into a part two of Jupiter's Legacy just to hear your thoughts on on what you thought of the second half of this. But it's just, I just, I, I understand what they were getting at, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, let us know in the comments section if you've caught Jupiter's Legacy and let us know what you think of the show. Uh, Brian, any last words? No, it's, a, it's, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of a lull. Uh, I find myself re-watching the little bits of Eternals footage over and over again. That's the one piece of stuff out there that I can't get enough of. Um, but listen, I mean, other than that, just uh, just wait, just getting excited. And no, I think Marvel was smart to put a little bit of a break and let Loki breathe a little bit. I yeah. think yeah, I find myself being like, you know, it's not the highest on my list, but having a few weeks off from an MCU show, I, I, I'm just sort of excited to have an MCU show on yeah. the horizon. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. And then and then obviously Black Widow behind it. I think, like I said, for me, the debate is just am I, am I willing to go back to the theater for that one or, yeah. or am I going to wait for wait for Shang-Chi? But yeah, um, there are a couple of shows I would like to mention and get some feedback on from other people if they've uh, had the opportunity to see it. Um, a Black Samurai show on Netflix, uh, uh, Asuke, I believe is the, the name of that show. If you've checked that out, let me know in the comment section what you thought of that show. Um, and if you guys are interested, well, I'll talk about it. I don't know if you get a chance to see it, um, Brian, because um, I would be interested in hearing what you have to say about that show. Uh, I think this um, Stansfield, what's his name? Keith Stanfield. Okay. He's, yeah. he, he's, he's the, the star, right? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Check it out if you get a chance. I, I, Castlevania is coming out. Uh, the last season of Castlevania, and I believe they're going to be doing spinoffs for that. But uh, it's coming out this Friday. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have checked that out. Um, Brian, since we've had this break, you have time to see. Son, of, what's it called again? Blood of Zeus. Okay. Watch that. Watch that. I want to hear your opinion because you say you like this stuff, right? Okay. And I think you 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 at least be interested enough to see the whole way through because I think it was dope. But yeah, I hope you get a chance to see uh Blood of Zeus because this, you know, we talked about the, you know, Zeus and Hercules, whatever the stuff, even though it doesn't have to do anything with Hercules, but it's still 
an interesting show and then interesting show of powers as well so i i think you should definitely at least give it a couple of episodes shot um and did you ever get a chance to see castlevania i watched season one i would say no, I would say like you like that probably more. You like that style of stuff more than I do, I think. But uh, it was good. It was well made. It, it, it yeah. gets it gets better. It gets better. The dialogue and the sort of themes that they talk about and it, it's it's really it's really dope. It's really well done and written and, and the cinematography, all that stuff is really well done. Uh, but that's our show for today. A lot of news again. Not a lot of shows to discuss except for Jupiter's Legacy, which um, I have some mixed feelings about um but there are people that that say that they love it i don't know how but if that's what you like then that's what you like but it definitely um doesn't warrant a season two even though it ended like we're definitely getting one let's see let's see uh, that's our show for today. Hit that like, hit subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.